focus areas, uh, customer and the community, and they really interact interchange with each other. We can't do um, our work to highlight and improve the experience for airport customers without um, the community at large, and that includes our, our artist community. At the same time, as we're trying to highlight the work of the community for our customers, we're actively relying on um, positive and good relationships and an understanding of what's happening in the community, specifically the arts and culture community. Um, so, so those are the two focus areas. There's five guiding principles that we use um, to conduct that work while we're thinking about uh, enhancements for our customers and engaging the community. Um, and so those five guiding principles are wayfinding, um, acting as a gateway to our region, enhancing and enriching the experience for airport airport patrons, um, communicating our story, and providing a calming effect. And I'm just going to touch on each one of those briefly. Um, so wayfinding um, in non-traditional ways, art can provide a vehicle for people to understand how to navigate the airport um, <clears throat> without just literal signing, you know, signage, go here, go there. Um, so whether it's performing arts and concerts we have interspersed throughout the campus, or it's this exhibition program and the many sites that we activate for that, or it's our public art collection with over 50 works, um, it can really help people navigate and find their way A to B in really interesting and compelling ways. So we're always thinking about wayfinding and in, in all the work that we do. Um, communicating our story, I touched on that a little bit in the in the focus areas, um, the customer and community, but we always want to communicate uh, what's happening in San Diego and do that through the lens in the vehicle of art. And um, so that's pretty straightforward, but that's one of our guiding principles. Enhancing or enriching um, the experience of airport patrons, we want to provide um, this unexpected encounter with arts and culture really like to provide um, these surprise moments and um, it's 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 not uncommon these days right a lot of Americans um, there's a study that I always quote through Americans for the arts but 77 percent of Americans now experience the majority of their art experiences in non-traditional venues uh, and actually in that study airports specifically were called out um, as one of the main venues that people expect now to to see art. And so um, we're thinking about that. We're keeping that in mind. We want to provide those experiences and really keep people on their toes and um, not quite sure what to expect in all the right ways um, for art and arts programming at the airport. So that's enhancing or enriching the customer experience. Calming, um, as many of us know, it can be stressful to fly these days. It seems almost and in, only increasingly so. And um, the arts are really a good um, avenue to help people um, de-stress, whether that's taking in a, a piece of visual artwork or hearing a performance or utilizing one of our spaces commissioned by artists to do just that, help you calm and have a different experience in the airport environment. And so we're um, always thinking about calming too. And then finally, um, acting as a gateway to the region. Um, and that means reinforcing this idea that once you've landed at the airport, you know you're in San Diego, you get to get excited about that. And it also means that you um, have an awareness that you're at the airport itself and how that might differ from your experience at other airports. Um, we're really proud of this one. Ours is clean, you know, filled with natural light and filled with some really innovative um, thinking that's gone into the design. Um, and the art integration. So um, those are the five guiding principles that we're always considering as we do our work. And then finally, the three core areas of our program, um, which we're really here to talk about today, one of those core program areas, which is our temporary exhibitions. Ahead of that is public art, which Katie uh, manages, and we've got a lot of activity related to the new terminal that we are actively underway in building as we speak, and that'll be complete in about five years. Um, quite a number of exciting public art projects related to that. And Katie's going to talk about public art um, in more detail in a second. Performing arts, um, we have ongoing concerts and we have a residency program. Tony's going to talk a little bit about that. And then, of course, our exhibition program, which we're going to delve into great detail about tonight, um, you know, around the, um, the call for artist submissions for this year's theme of a necessary departure. 
Um, so no quiz on this at the end, but hopefully that was helpful and insightful um, for you to just have some context about you know, what we do as a program at this airport. And there's a lot more, but we thought that would set the stage um, for our discussion tonight about the exhibition program. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Katie to talk about public art and um, exhibitions. Great, thanks, Chris. Yeah, so as Chris mentioned, um, most of, of what I work on is, is the public art program here at SAN. And um, so I'm going to tell you just a little bit about that program and a little bit about the temporary art program. So the uh, public art program, um, there's over 30 or over 40 pieces of art in the public art collection at SAN uh, with another six new public art commissions that will be installed in the new Terminal 1 uh, in 2025. And that's those are the new commissions that Chris was just referencing. Um, uh, we also have a 2% for public art program that helps fund future public art projects at the airport. Uh, and many of the pieces uh, in our collection are site specific and integrated into the architecture of the terminal. Um, so a lot of thought and planning goes into all of these pieces, um, but especially into the, the new commissions as well as we're building this new terminal. Um, the temporary program here we go. The temporary program has 15 or more sites that are activated on an annual basis with a themed exhibit. Um, we've exhibited works in a wide range of mediums from sculpture to painting to video. Uh, one of the goals of this program is to provide local artists with a paid opportunity to exhibit their work while also giving passengers a welcoming experience and a, a really good first impression of the local arts community in San Diego. The most recent ex exhibition was titled Make Yourself at Home and was just deinstalled in June. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can do so right here. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Tony to talk a little bit about our performing arts program. Yeah, so um, we have our um, uh, performing arts um, uh, concerts uh, that we are doing lately. Um, uh, twice a week. We do it on, on Thursdays and on Fridays. Uh, we rely on our production specialist uh, to um, assist us providing a good diversity with our performers. And uh, uh, at the moment, we're only performing in one stage, but uh, coming uh, next month, we're going to have a, a four uh, concerts a week and we're going to activate other stages, you know, in the Sunset Cove and also in Terminal One. And uh, uh, we could have from uh, Latin music to jazz. Uh, 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 all types of music, you know, classical, you know, so uh, we're doing it twice a week right now, but uh, come August, we're going to have uh, four concerts a week, and uh, it's been very well received by all uh, stakeholders, internal and external, and uh, we take a lot of pride on that because uh, uh, people like it, you know, they, today I was at Transportation Island, and we have a, a keyboard piano player, uh, a key slayer, is his name, Peter Key Slayer, and uh, the line and transportation line and uh, people waiting for uh, the the shuttle to take them to the rental car center. Uh, car center. It was super long and uh, they were enjoying the music. So we always get kudos from that, you know, from the passengers. Uh, I saw people dancing and singing along with with uh, the tunes, you know, that he was playing. And uh, uh, so that's what we're doing with performing arts. Is uh, uh, we take a lot of pride on that and in that aspect of uh, the performing arts and. Uh, uh, hopefully, you know, one of these days when you get to travel, even if you're not traveling, come on over and enjoy one of the concerts that we have uh, at Transportation Island. And soon also we're going to have them at uh, Sunset Cove and uh, hopefully in Terminal 1 again. Great. Thanks, Tony. And you can find um, all that information um, in our event calendar on our website here. So if you're if you're getting ready to travel and you want to see what's coming and maybe catch a performance, uh, you can always do that here on our website. Um, there's two other sections that I just wanted to point out really quick for for good information for upcoming and ongoing opportunities. Um, I'd recommend checking out our blog. Um, this is where we've We'll post any call for artist submissions um, and other opportunities as they come up. Um, you can also find that at the very bottom of our web page by going straight here to opportunities. Um, and that way you can also find more information on uh, public art, temporary exhibitions and performing arts opportunities and how to apply. Um, so with that, 
Uh, Chris, yeah, I was going to throw in really quickly just on that note. Um, uh, just for this group's awareness, we will be releasing a call for submissions for our performing arts residency um, program as well. So that's the other half of the performing arts that Tony um, covered our ongoing concerts. Right now, our residency program is idle, but it will be relaunching really soon. Um, and we're excited to have uh, a, a new staff member join us that'll be uh, joining us um, early next month, which will help us launch that program, relaunch that program. Um, and um, more information, like Katie just said, is on the website that talks specifically about that program, which um, remains the first of its kind at any US airport. So excited about that, as well as all the other offerings that we just covered. So thank you guys. I think with that, let's jump right into the call. Yeah. Um, so as I noted, we've got this um, you know, posted to our website, so you can access the call here anytime um, if you need another copy or if um, you need the link, I can submit that in the chat for you guys. Um, but we're just going to go through this call, and if you have any questions at any point, like Chris said, just please put your hand up um, and we'll get to um, answering your questions. So a little bit of background about our theme of a necessary departure. Um, you know, obviously the past two years have been a really transformative time um, and a difficult time for many due to the pandemic. But um, what we really want to focus on in this exhibition is ways that this departure from the status quo has allowed people to re-examine the way we live and connect with the world around us and um, any innovations that have been created. Um, artists are great problem solvers and um, I think there have been a lot of uh, creative and innovative um, you know, projects that have come about as a result of this time. Um, so just reading through some of this, um, some of the prompts, you know, that we've provided are how have artists as natural problem solvers found solutions that are innovative, groundbreaking or transformative? How did their personal experiences translate into art? And in turn, how did the resulting work provide us all with a perspective that enabled us to navigate these times? What new or unexpected opportunities have been created as a result of this shift? And how have artists played a role in creating a sense of community and human connection during this time? And I think what's really important about um, you know, this section to note is that um, because of the theme and because of what we're kind of diving into there, we're asking that artists submit only existing artwork that was made in the last two and a half years um, for consideration. So um, typically, you know, in, in previous years, we would have opened that up to artists to submit proposals for work um, that has not yet been created. But for this exhibit in particular, we're just asking for already created work. So the next section I'll go through just briefly is how the artworks are selected for um, our exhibition program. And really this is a um, joint effort between the arts program staff and a jury panel. And that jury panel is made up of local artists who've either been in the program and experienced it. And so they kind of understand, you know, what a unique location it is to show at the airport and can provide that perspective um, when reviewing submissions. So that will be um, something that happens in August after um, all the submissions have been um, due on the deadline. So we'll um, probably take about a couple of weeks uh, to review and select those works. Um, and just to note here that works that are interactive in nature will be prioritized. So that can be a number of different ways that that interaction can occur, but um, inter interactivity is something that um, works really well in an airport environment and something that we would look for in um, potential applications. So moving right along, um, just wanted to call out some key dates here. Obviously, submissions are due um, August 5th, and that can be August 5th at 11.59 p.m., but um, the key call out here is just don't wait until the last minute <laughs> to submit. 
um, because it is quite a bit of work pulling all of these things together for the submission. Um, and you don't want to get in a bind with time and uh, submit late. So would definitely recommend getting a head start on this process as soon as you can. Um, and then notifications and contracting would happen late August 2022. Um, studio and site visits, if needed, would happen in September. And then installation October of 2022. And this is a one year long exhibition, so it would go until October of 2023. Katie, we've got a question before we jump into the submission requirements right now. So, um, and Ellen, I might have you just reinforce a little bit more context for the question, but the, the question is, would we accept a series that has some photos that were taken more than two and a half years ago? Um, uh, Ellen, if you're able to unmute, I'd be curious to know what else might be in that series, and that might help us better answer the question. Sure, sure. Um, well, as a photo artist, I, I've been working on series ongoing, and uh, during the pandemic, it was a little hard to travel. Um, so I do have some images I've been working on, but um, they're not taken locally. Um, so um, some of them that relate to a series I'm working on, um, are you know be a little longer than two and a half years ago. It just seems like a very narrow window, especially when you were in a global pandemic. So, are there photos in this series that do come from the period that we reference within the last two and a half years? Or are there also some yes. photos that include that? Okay, then I yes. think that would yeah. I think um, the panel would absolutely accept that and review it. Um, um, I don't see a reason why we'd prohibit that as long as some part of the series had work that was inclusive of the period that we're um, seeking right now. So I'd say yes, we would accept that. Production, like I've been gathering images and making um, a mont like a collage. So some of the images were taken prior um, as well mm -hmm. that I've worked on in the last two and a half years. So something like that, I'm thinking. That's yeah, and again, I think that sounds fair. Um, the main the, the main idea is in keeping with the the theme here that um, Katie called out at the start. So if you feel that the work touches on that or has relation to the to the theme, then um, as long as there's work that is included in this most recent couple years, while also maybe including some work that's not, that would be fair as a submission. Okay, thank you. I see one other. Uh, Hand up from Sori Designs. Hi, good afternoon. This is Suri, my Karen. Um, very nice meeting you uh, all, and uh, thank you so much for all the wonderful information. Uh, I'm actually really excited that I found out about this uh, call to artists because uh, uh, I've been uh, directing a project um, that uh, it is. It came about because of what happened in the. COVID um, pandemic years, and it was very much inspired by what we learned as an organization about it. And um, so I'm really excited to share that project with you. Now, I have a question about the interactive aspect of it, uh, because our project is also very interactive, and it can be interactive in both ways. Um, Hands-on, like leaving um, uh, basically um, the prop or the pen and paper for the a participant to um, actually write the notes and submit, or we could uh, provide the interactivity through sending messages and digitally and through the screen. So we were wondering uh, what type of interactivity are you looking for? Uh, what is easier for you in case like you feel like you, if it's hands on, do you need somebody there to help people as security? Or um, it, does it matter? Does it not matter? We can just leave it there for people to um, interact. It's such a good question. I know um, the team will have um, some additional info, but I'll, I'll just lead it off by saying, and we kind of anticipated this question because so much has changed in our world with touch um, for health and safety reasons. And so um, I love the idea that there might be a flexibility in your submission so that it may be something that um, could be interactive while not necessarily being as tactile as writing on paper or using writing utensils that might be shared. Um, although I would say include both options in your submission um, because the second part of what you're um, kind of acknowledging um, we'll cover in a second, but we are also seeking and prioritizing 
um, projects that could allow for a workshop of sorts, some sort of interaction in that regard. So, um, you know, it might be the case that uh, obviously not um, familiar with your exact proposal, but it may be the case that we could select it and, and feature that work and highlight the interactivity through a workshop while um, you know, and that would be an isolated dates, right? Maybe one or two workshops over the span of the year run, um, while the rest of the time the interactivity could be uh, more virtual or, um, you know, online um, sort of interactivity. I hope that makes sense. And um, Katie, perfect. anything else? Yes, and that's actually another ironic aspect aspect of it because our project also does have a workshop. <laughs> so, it, it, yeah, so it, it's all wonderful. Thank you. That's great, Sori. Yeah, I, I would just say I agree every, with everything Chris said. And then, um, you know, I think part of the cool part about proposing something is that I think we could come up with a couple of different options. And I think if you're able to present a couple of different ways that things could be achieved in your proposal, that would really help us in figuring out um, how it fits into the overall program. Um, I would also just tell you to check out this section um, about facilitating an on-site workshop um, and including that in your submission. Perfect, thank you. Yes, I will absolutely um, elaborate on all those options. Thank you. Any other questions or? I can start whenever. Just want to make sure everybody's got a chance to ask questions. OK, well, I'll go ahead and keep going. Um, so the submission requirements uh, for this exhibition includes um, all of these different components. So a cover sheet, a letter statement of interest, a um, collection of images, and video work. If this applies to you, if it doesn't apply to you, don't don't include video. And then uh, an annotated list, credentials, and all of this will go into one PDF that you submit via email to arts.san.org. Um, and the subject line of that email should be a necessary departure. And only email submissions will be reviewed for this exhibit. Um, so just to kind of clarify on some of those things. What we're really looking for here doesn't need to be very complex or designed. It can be very straightforward. Um, as long as we get your images, the title, your dates, your dimensions, your mediums, your brief descriptions, all of this in one single PDF is exactly what we're looking for. So this is just an example of a previous artist that um, we exhibited. She um, had an, uh, a site in our Make Yourself at Home exhibit, and this is what she submitted to us for review. So it doesn't have to be um, complicated at all. Uh, just make sure that the single PDF includes all of the different um, components uh, that we're requesting here. Um, now, with your images, we're requesting that those be uh, 72 DPI um, and that the file size is not above 10 megabytes and that those are submitted. Um, they're either JPEGs or um, PC compatible files only, and those will still go inside your PDF that gets submitted. Um, so it's all just one form. Um, for video, we're requesting that you send website links for any video projects. Um, so either post it on YouTube, Vimeo, uh, or another site, just as long as we're able to access them until October 31st of 2022. Um, we are not accepting like WeTransfer or Dropbox files um, for video submissions. Any questions on the submittables? Okay. Hopefully it is pretty straightforward, but um, you know, the goal here is we're, we're really just trying to simplify the submission process. If you've applied for 
um, other opportunities, um, specifically through a government agency. Um, you might be familiar with platforms like um, Planet Bids or um, some of these other procurement based systems, which are very um, you know, lengthy and heavy handed in um, registrations and things like that. And we're fortunate that um, through the support of our leadership at the airport, a program like our exhibition um, opportunities, we're able to have a little bit more um, looser submission process, a little bit more informal. And so um, what you're seeing and hearing today is the work of this team to craft um, what we again hope is just a, a pretty straightforward application for you as you submit. The reason why we're asking for everything in, in a single PDF is because we don't want um, to receive emails with images attached and then they might get scattered or lost, hard for us to track. We're just asking you to put it all into a single document. Um, and um, I think at this point, we're all pretty familiar with creating a PDF. But, um, if not, there's there's definitely applications that are all out there that'll do it for you in a second. So, um, and then the sort of image size and resolution and um, overall file size. The reason why we included all that is um, we, we also recognize some of these files could get very large if you're um, submitting, you know, high, high resolution and large format. Um, images and that would clog our system. So please do your best to, to keep those image sizes no greater than 10 megabytes or so as you're um, inserting them into the PDF. And if you ever have questions as you are submitting this, and again, the key call out is um, submit early, don't wait till the last day, because this team is definitely here to answer questions um, that might come up as you're um, working to compile this and submit. You can shoot a, a inquiry to the same address shown that you would send your submissions to, and um, that is not gonna, you're not gonna be penalized for asking any questions, uh, anything like that, so just, um, let us know if you're having any lack of clarity around the things that we're talking about tonight. Great, yeah, and I'll I'll just say this: these can be created in Word, they can be created in PowerPoint, they can be created in any you know Adobe software, as long as you export it as a PDF um, and follow these um, guidelines for the image sizes, then you'll be in good shape. So. Um, again, just I can't stress enough. Don't worry about designing this. Just make it legible and include all the information we're asking for and, and it'll be great. Um, so moving on, I will just note that all media is eligible for consideration for our program. Um, but again, all submissions must be existing artwork made in the last two and a half years. Um, and I think We've we've kind of gone over that and some of the limitations or um, kind of guidelines there. Um, compensation for this um, exhibit is a thousand dollars for proposals. So um, you're you're chosen to be a part of the program. Um, that will be included as the stipend. Um, briefly, just we'll go through the display plans that are attached to this document. Um, this list here is not exhaustive. We've got other sites that are not included in this list, um, but I would definitely encourage you guys to take a look at this and see if there is a site that pops out to you that would be perfect for the idea or your proposal. Um, and definitely let us know if you have an idea about where you want to display your work. Um, liability and insurance. So our loan agreements, we provide um, property insurance for all exhibitions. Um, there's also uh, a transportation and um, delivery that we can arrange if needed. Um, if you're local, then we'd request that you try to work with us to drop things off directly at the airport, but um, we can we can arrange transportation if needed and delivery services. Um, reproduction rights, we reserve the right to photograph, film, videotape, um, and otherwise show your exhibits um, for any of the chosen artists. So uh, just make sure that you're all right with that before you submit. 
And then final things to just remember, incomplete or late entries will not be accepted. So after that 1159 um, on August 5th, we won't be accepting any other applications. So try to get it in um, by the due date. Um, I think next we'll just go through all the available sites here and quickly just um, look at those together and let me know if you have any questions now before we move on. Katie, we have a question. Great. On the chat. Um, sorry, so this is from Suri. Uh, again, Suri says, would you recommend the artist coming to the airport and taking a look around in person to get a better feel for the available spaces? Would that be an option? Um, it's funny because I was just going to call out um, just kind of what we have available. And of course, you can come to the airport at any time on your own convenience. Um, we unfortunately will not be able to offer um, tours or site visits in advance um, of any submissions just because we um, traditionally will receive between 80 and 100 um, applications for this program. So that could be a lot of um, site tours if we had to offer that to each one, each person. I will say that there is a map available um, on the airport's overall website. It's it's a work in progress, um, so it's not as detailed as we'd like, but it does call out um, our public art locations, and that may or may not help you. In this case, it kind of gives you a feel for the overall flow of the terminal and where some of our public art is located. Um, but specifically, you know, sites for this um, exhibition, what I can share, what we can share is we've got um, a diverse range of offerings. So there are standalone um, display cases. Um, we've got 16, I think, standalone cases, uh, 16 or 18. Um, we've got wall space available, um, significant wall space available. We have built in. Um, display work, display cases for three dimensional or two dimensional. You're seeing that on the first slide here below. Um, we have also over the years fabricated um, different pedestals and platforms depending on um, the the size and scale of work to be displayed. That's um, you know for three dimensional potentially sculpture esque work. So we've we've really got um, I think a well rounded. Um, availability of sites and uh, methods to display the work. So maybe that helps answer some of the question. Um, you know, beyond that, it's pre and post security largely focus on Terminal 2 um, or Terminal 1, which is is the facility that's being um, replaced by the, the new building that's under construction as we speak. Um, that is so comprised for space that we really don't activate that um, through this exhibition program. So everything that we're really talking about is in uh, Terminal 2 East and West, um, again, both before security and after. Um, so hopefully that ha helps answer a little bit of the question, but um, long answer for saying we wouldn't be available to lead you in a tour. You, of course, again, could come down and, and tour the airport sites. There, There is sort of like that map I called out for public art uh, available on the airport's website, um, but that would be the answer there. I see yeah. a couple more coming in. Sorry, go ahead, Katie. I'll also just say on that note, like if, if you don't, if you look at this list and you don't have a site in mind or your piece is flexible, it can really be installed in several of these locations, then you don't need to include that in your application because uh, there will be, you know, um, some outreach that we will do to uh, to the uh, proposals that we're planning to accept and try to find the right site for for that work. So um, don't stress about it too much if there is just um, a, a site on this list that catches your eye that you think would be perfect, include it. Uh, but if not, don't worry about it. Yeah, not a requirement, exactly. Not a requirement to list a preferred site at all. Um, one other question, as an international artist, may I apply? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, a lot of what has been featured in this exhibition um, over the years has definitely been um, local artwork, but um, I anticipate that uh, as an international artist, you have some sort of connection to San Diego and uh, Anne asked this question. So Anne, if you have any additional context, feel free to 
chime in, but there is, I'll just say kind of wholesale, there's no limitation on your ability to apply as an international artist for this opportunity. I don't know if you had anything else to add, uh, Anne, or not. If you do, feel free to unmute. Okay. Um, what about the, the shipping? How does it work? Transportation, shipping? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's a great question. So are you are you asking if the art is located overseas, how would we arrange and coordinate shipping? Yeah, exactly. Okay, that'll be problematic because we don't have the budget to cover that sort of transportation or shipping. What we um, do have at, uh, at our disposal is Artwork San Diego, uh, the local art handling firm that can um, arrange and coordinate pickup. Um, and transportation of artwork locally, um, but really beyond San Diego County, um, we don't have that benefit of being able to support um, the costs, you know, related to shipping or something like that from overseas. If you were able to find a, a way to get it to San Diego County, then we could take it from there, but um, unfortunately, Beyond that, um, we we wouldn't be able to support it. Okay, thank you. Also, uh, speaking of uh, kind of expenses on that line, I mean, a photo could be presented digitally or printed. Um, so I assume the stipend is, you know, some sort of compensation for the expenses of printing and mounting, or um, what about television? like or monitors that um, images could be projected on or does that is, is that all on the artist so we we do have uh, digital monitors um you know at our disposal so that's not anything we're asking artists to procure um you know we have that available so that would just be a digital asset uh, to show the artwork on those monitors um print it depends on the site and the scale of the work and um, our overall programming and curating of the program. We have um, in years past undertaken some expense for printing, um, depending again on the site. There, there's a called the transition corridor. It's a basically a long hallway um, connecting Terminal 2 East and Terminal 2 West. And you know, that's a location where we can produce or reproduce um, images and graphics at a larger um, scale. And that's something that we would cover the cost of. Um, other than that, um, what we're actually, so that's the that's the hall, hallway in question there. However, those um, images, those are actually, those were submitted by the artist, or in this case, um, uh, uh, Tony helped me on the company, I would say Jet Propulsion Laboratories, and I, did I get that right? Uh, no, we have Scantec and LNL Printing. Um, so we, those are the companies we have available to us. If we were to print um, the images, um, I guess what I was getting at is um, like the images we're seeing on screen, those are actually, um, you know, the asset is the artwork itself, the framed artwork that was submitted or contributed um, as part of the proposal. Um, so I, if, it, if, if the submission um, only includes the digital asset and the expectation would be for us to print it. Please make sure that you indicate that in your submission so we can plan accordingly and know, um, you know, do we have that available to us? Is it going to work with the overall curation of the show? If the asset is the physical object that can be displayed at the airport, um, then note that um, please as well, because there is a difference in what our availability, availability is to display either. Sure. I'm just thinking like even in a proposal, like at this point, um, my my artwork can go any size, but, you know, bigger is always better. <laughs> it, it makes an impact um, uh, when people are passing by, but um, the yeah. cost of print is is quite um, high. And and do do photographs normally get framed or mounted or. Is that uh, depending on the artist and how they want to present the work? 
Yes, that's part of the, the conversation I think Katie was just talking about. So we, we definitely do enter into a dialogue depending on what your requests are. And again, what we have available to us as we're thinking about the overall curation. Um, we, you know, we do welcome that input. So if you believe that um, a certain scale uh, would be preferred to, to you know, display, uh, whether it's a photograph or whatever it might be, please call that out because it will help us decide you know, where could it live and um, is there availability to do that? And um, um, but like I said, there there are also plenty of submissions that we receive where it's a physical object. It may be framed already or it may require us to frame it. We do have the availability to do some framing um, as well. We've done that over the years and um, you'll see, I think, even in some of these slides, the, the casework that we um, have activated, we've um, come up with some very custom um, you know, fabrications for uh, whatever it might be, framing, pedestals, um, things like that. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I know the airport well, and I always love having um, extra time to go from each terminal and that passageway you're speaking about um, and really enjoyed the work I've seen for sure. I we appreciate the question, Ellen. And, you know, that that hallway is a great example of you know, we talked about wayfinding, but it, it is it's this transition in um, space, tr transitionary space. And so we're always thinking about what's the best um, you know, art to put there and how do we curate it in such a way that people can experience it as they're moving quickly through that area. And um, over the years, it does seem like um, photography has worked really well in that space in larger scale, like you mentioned, too. So, um, yeah, I think just call it out in your submission what what your preference would be and um you know, then we can open a dialogue if selected to figure out how we would actually, you know, activate that and bring it to fruition. Wonderful, thank you. Sure. Um, and then Suri, I'm seeing another question um, here. So if I have a second project that meets the criteria as well, should I submit two separate proposals for them or submit both in one proposal? Definitely two um, separate proposals so we can keep them straight, but, um, yeah, two, and there is no limit. Um, you know, if they if they really are different in nature, um, but you're the same artist, there's no reason why you can't submit both. But yeah, make sure that they are separate submissions. All right. Um, sorry, I still see your hand up, but I think that's a carryover from before. So if there's um, no other questions, um, I think we can talk through just a couple. Oh, nope, seeing one more go up from Cloud Club Collective. Hi, uh, thank you. My question has to do with the potential workshop and the requirements, uh, mainly uh, security background, you know, how much time, um, what, what sort of effort is involved in yeah. being cleared to um, conduct a workshop at the airport? Spoken like someone who may have some experience already working in the airport environment. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so what we have traditionally done for the workshops, and I don't know why it would change, um, it would essentially just secure visitor badge, um, you know, access for you um, or whatever artists are involved in the in the workshop. Um, that we would escort you know to get through security so there would be no additional um, security or badging protocol or training required for a workshop like this um, even if it were to be a little more ongoing meaning um, maybe there are several dates um, that we identify to do this workshop that is different from our residency program where we actually do ask the group who's in residence at the airport for six months um, for a six month period to go through our security training and get, um, you know, full badge access. Um, and um, that's quite a bit more involved as it sounds like you understand, but for the workshops, none of that's required. Um, we would just work to identify a date and the, the window of time that we're looking at, and then we would secure, um, you know, a temporary visitor badge for you and whoever else might be involved to facilitate the workshop. Of course, um, in securing that visitor badge, we do run it through our access control office. And so if for some reason um, there was a person that had outstanding warrant as an example or something like that, they likely would not be approved for a, a visitor badge, temporary visitor badge. And there might be other things that would ding it. 
haven't really seen that happen too much and it's a very quick turnaround generally 24 hours or so um, to get approval for a visitor badge um, access for something like this perfect thank you sure okay um i think that's all i'm seeing right now so why don't we, we've got just a few minutes left we'll just cruise through a couple of these sites that we can talk about. And like we said, there's there's more, but um, hopefully this gives a little bit um, context for um, some of our built-in options right now. Yeah, so uh, this first uh, case that we're looking at is in Terminal 2 West uh, near the TSA checkpoint here. Um, so the site is actually tucked in this nice little um, area as people are going through security. Um, and this is just an example of a piece that has been exhibited there previously. Um, and if you're interested in the dimensions, take a look here. Um, there is lighting in this case above, um, but it is not adjustable. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, also in Terminal 2 West, we've got these wall cases. Um, there's actually four of them, so it's it's two here on the end and then two on the other end as well. Um, so the dimensions are provided here and it has the same type of lighting system overhead as the other one. Um, main thing to note is that we would like for this site to be um, the same proposal, so it's a lot of space but if you have something that would fit in here um, just know that it, you would need to propose something that could fill all four cases the next location here is in terminal 2 east um, it's this nice little alcove that's tucked in gate hold area um, there's lots of seating nearby um, and it's uh, near gate 28 if you've ever been over that way um, and then here's the dimensions of that space. This is um, drywall, I believe, behind it. So that is something that um, we can nail into and install into um, fairly easily. And it does have um, three electrical outlets as well, if you're interested in doing something uh, with video. This next location here is in Terminal 2 West. Um, in the north concourse and it is this stone wall um, and we've had a couple different things installed here one was vinyl um, but this wall correct me if i'm wrong chris i don't think that you can actually hammer nails into this wall at all right um hammer's not the right word go ahead tony i know what you're going to say but go ahead yeah you you can um you can actually use a, a screw um it is drag wall in the back so we can use a uh, screw, safety screws, they call it, you know, so uh, uh, security screws, what they use in galleries. So, so to make sure that whatever is screwing to, you know, it won't be pulled out. You know, they have these uh, special screws that with uh, very specific uh, heads, you know, that you won't be able to use a regular screwdriver. You know, it's just that way uh, uh, no passengers be able to unscrew it. Though. Perfect. So, yeah, you, you can penetrate the wall a little bit. We have. Um, it, it's an expansive space, and um, one of the challenges with this, um, kind of like with the transition corridor we talked about a minute ago, is um, we have to be really conscious as our team um, to think about people bumping into it because it is, it's one of these areas. And so um, what we're seeing on screen here is you know, three-dimensional sculptural work, which actually survived really well, but there were periods throughout that year where we did have to go and reattach some of the pieces that got knocked down. Um, currently, we've got two-dimensional um, drawings displayed here, and um, even those, um, you know, we, we just, um, an airport so we have to be sort of always keeping our eye on it and make sure that we're um, keeping it in the best condition we can i think um, we're going to move forward with having permanent stanchions in this area at least permanent to the degree that we can um, um, convince our operations colleagues to to allow them to be there throughout the run of the show um, but anyway getting too into the weeds here but quite a sizable space and could be activated in a number of different ways perfect um, so this next location here are our display cases in Terminal 2 West. Um, these are pretty sizable uh, cube 
vitrine cases that have um, lighting integrated into them. So um, there are group, there are different groupings of cases. There's a group of four cases pre-security, a group of five cases post-security, and a group of six cases post-security. Um, and as with the other uh, location, you we would like for all of those cases um, in each group to be used by the same proposal. Here's that Terminal 2 East transition corridor we were just talking about. Um, again, this is this is drywall. Um, there's one electrical outlet in this area. Um, and then our request here is that all three sections of this wall be um, used by the same uh, proposal. In Terminal 2 West in the International Arrivals area, we've got um, some video monitors. Um, we would work with any participants that um, submit video work to find the right location uh, for the video pieces. So um, if you are submitting video, this is just one of a few different options that you might be able to choose from. And then Sorry, the really last- quick, Tony. Tony, what's the total count on video monitors we have right now? I'm not to put you on the spot, but I, five currently displayed. We have four. Um, uh, I don't remember the size of it. We have four uh, small uh, monitors that we use in the past, you know, next to the uh, FIS uh, uh, with um, uh, video and photos also displaying. And then we have one in the, in the uh, T2 West Concourse, you know, uh, post security that we're using currently with uh, Lean, you know, so. We have four and we have uh, the 175 inch uh, monitor. Yeah, that's right. So the, the larger monitor post security currently installed um, T2 West, like Tony said, about 75 inch monitor, newly purchased um, just last year. And then the four other monitors that are pre security, um, I think they're about 40, 40. Yeah, they're about 40, 42 inches, you know. Yeah, there you go. So just so. Um, any interested artists um, have that information. That's what we currently have in our arsenal, and there's always a miscellaneous one or two floating around. I know we've used a couple 32-inch monitors in years past. Um, I don't know that we have anything uh, the wood that we would have anything greater than 75 inches. Well, like I said, we just procured that one uh, last year. But um, anyway, a number of digital assets to to utilize. So, sorry, Perfect. Katie, go ahead. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Um, the last location that we're just going to share here is the piano, and this is our public piano. Um, so we typically have an artist or arts team come in and create a design treatment um, on this piano. So it's it's time for it to be refreshed, and uh, we're looking for submissions that represent a theme, the theme um, on this public piano. So this is kind of our, our last location here. And with that, are there any last questions? We've got, we do have one in the chat and just really quickly on the public piano. Um, we're really excited about this piece and it has um, great return on investment. Um, you know, if we're out there as staff walking through this area of the airport, it's, um, it's pre-security. Um, basically, right as you walk into the new terminal, Terminal 2 West um, ticketing area, um, <clears throat> There's this, there's this atrium, and that's where the piano is located. And if you walk past and you stand there for more than five minutes on any given day, you see somebody sit down and play this instrument. And the uh, the range of um, performances that you hear, it's incredible. Um, we've heard some outstanding, I mean, we're talking about um, highly acclaimed Grammy winners, things like that. People have sent us notices thanking us for the, the piano in this space. And um, not a new idea, right, to have a piano in a public area, um, not even a new idea to have an artist create a treatment on this piano, but something that really um, has been successful for us for all these years and um, want to continue that. So um, if not you, tell your friends because we definitely want to um, highlight that um, instrument and that engagement for people to sit down and create even um, you know a greater ambiance at the airport. Um, tell your friends. Um, so the question back to the video monitors, um, does it include audio? And that is a tricky question <clears throat> because depending on the space that it's in, um, audio can or cannot um, work to positive effect. It's the airport, so there's a lot of overhead announcements ongoing. 
also depending again on the space there may be um, piped in music and hustle and bustle and so it's not always the case that an audio application um, would work well however there has been um, a reference back um, years past there was at least one installation that i can recall that did include audio um, we tried our best to make sure that it wasn't too near um, a hold room area where there were constant announcements being made by the uh, airline staff, um, right, announcing boarding and all those types of things, um, because that's not well received when we program in those spaces and it's competing with the operational need to make announcements. So um, I think if that's the requirement, um, uh, Cloud Club Collective, uh, include that in your submissions and let us try to work with you to see is there a space available that we could you know highlight a monitor or two that could include audio like i said we've done it it's not the easiest thing to do in our environment but um you know there are probably a couple locations that it could work thank you sure and then one more question i know we're four minutes over here but is there anywhere um that we can access that powerpoint that was just used um, so absolutely, what you saw was the call itself. So that that is on our website under both the opportunities section um, and our noteworthy um, blog section on the website. Website is arts.sand.org. Um, throw that into the chat right now. But um, what you just saw is literally um, the page by page call. And at the very end of it, we included those sites so that if you wanted to reference any of those, um, feel free to do so. And Tony beat me to the punch, so there you go. In our general website, I'll just throw this in here too, but great. Awesome. Any other questions? We're not going anywhere. We unfortunately don't fly very often for our jobs. We we're at the airport 24-7 almost, but uh, a lot of work and a lot of work has gone into prepping for this exhibition. Um, we're just so excited um, to relaunch it because um, truly the deinstall that we just completed in June um, was for our previous exhibition that was on display for two years. And um, so we're excited to have this new theme and um, we're excited to re-engage with you as the artists and the arts community again for this project. So thank you. Um, please tell your friends. And I think with that, we'll we'll say good night. Um, this recording will be online too. We're going to post this up on our website, probably in the blog section. So um, you can come back to it if you didn't catch anything that we talked about tonight quick enough. All right. Share Katie, Tony, friends. anything else? <laughs> Share with your friends. <laughs> Share with your friends. That's right. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you. Thanks, Have a good night. Bye. Bye. -bye.